Today on Tree Talk, we are discussing black walnut, Juglans nigra. Juglans nigra is a very common tree of our floodplain habitats here in eastern North America. Grows very, very fast, really needs open conditions. Um, it is not very tolerant of shade at all, and it is prized for its wood um, and a really important uh, nut species, mass species for wildlife. So let's get on into it. The first thing that sticks out to me is the bark. To me, the bark of black walnut is really, really easy to see. Um, because just like everything in the walnut family, which includes hickories, we have these intersect intersecting uh, ridges and furrows. Now, with black walnut, they have these horizontal breaks, and those ridges uh, and furrows are kind of usually about four inches or so. Uh, they're kind of, they're blocky because of those horizontal breaks. Um, and the color is pretty distinctive too. To me, um, I describe black walnut as kind of a chocolatey brown color. We actually, well, up here, I don't have to cut any off. We have right underneath this kind of outer layer of bark, it's that, that dark brown color, uh, kind of like a purpley brown uh, type color bark. Um, so there you have the bark. I think another thing, the easiest way to identify black walnut is gonna be the walnuts. Um, so you've probably seen these all over the ground at some point if you live in Eastern North America. They drop when they're green um, and then they kind of mush right away. And then we have our walnut that, you know, looks like you expect a walnut to look like with those those little um, little indentations and ridges and things kind of you know looks like the the sort of folds in a brain um, you know and I say that intentionally because um, at one point in time they thought that walnut was good for your brain health uh, because it looks like a brain so that is called the uh, the signature doctrine uh, they thought back you know many years centuries ago that um, uh, the creator was, was showing us the uses of plants based on what they looked like. So it looks like a brain, well, it must be good uh, for your brain. Science has not really held that up, but walnut is still very good for you. Uh, walnut is eaten by humans, but black walnut here, our native eastern walnut, is uh, not as prized for uh, its taste and it, it's harder to process um, than our English walnut, which is what you're probably going to be buying in a store in a bag. Um, but that black walnut is eaten by humans. It is used in things, usually just not, you know, eaten straight up. Um, and the husks are actually used for a bunch of industrial purposes, which is kind of cool. Um, while we're on uses, we'll circle back to identification, but, you know, while we're going, uh, while we're on uses, the wood for black walnut is, is prized. It is very prized wood, and at various points in time, it's some of the most valuable wood uh, that you actually have uh, in eastern uh, forests. Um, so really important there. It's a, it's a tall tree. It grows well. It self prunes really well, and it has a nice broad crown and a really pretty form. Um, I actually like to say that black walnut has very good posture. Like, you really don't see it kind of wiggling around or, or kind of bent over very often. It uh, has to be kind of extreme conditions for that. They usually grow straight up and then branch out uh, like a vase. Um, and uh, again, I think I mentioned they are not tolerant at all of shade, um, so they really need to be growing in the open. And they're mostly getting spread around by animals, also by gravity. They'll fall and they'll roll down a hill, they'll fall into a creek and float downstream, um, but uh, squirrels are also planting them uh, uh, like crazy. Um, so let's get into the uh, leaves and the buds of black walnut. Uh, because it has such great form and self pruned so much, I couldn't find any out in the field uh, with leaves and to show uh, buds, leaves, things like that. So this is actually in my backyard. Um, this is a walnut that a squirrel planted in a place that uh, we don't need a walnut. And so I'm gonna cut it down anyway. I've been saving it uh, so that I could someday do a tree tuck on it. So uh, time was of the essence. Um, Let's look really quickly, before we look at that, at the bark. So we talked about the texture of it, very distinctive. That starts to show up even when the tree is very young. Um, so you can see, I mean, this is, you know, just an inch and a half in diameter here, and it's already kind of getting this blistering X and Y pattern, um, uh, even when it's, it's super small like that. So let's look at the leaves. Um, the buds are kind of a brown color as well, sort of a, a, a tannish brown color. Um, they're kind of blunt. These terminal buds are blunt like this. Um, and the axillary buds, which are in between the leaf and the stem, are, are kind of rounded and then they sort of elongate. Um, now, on the note of the leaves, so these are compound leaves, meaning this isn't one leaf, um, this is one leaf here. All leaves have a bud associated with them. So if we look closely at each of these leaflets, you do not see a bud in between each leaflet and, and the, the stem. So this is the rachis, which is the, the stem of a compound leaf. Where you do see the bud 
is in the actual of the actual leaf. So this entire thing is a leaf. In walnuts, they can be very long. They can be up to two feet long. So that's kind of a distinctive thing about walnuts that you'll see. Um, also, we're getting kind of yellowy here. This is the uh, color that walnuts turn. I have found that they are usually on the earlier end of trees that will um, start dropping leaves. Um, yeah, these ones, this one here in the backyard, a squirrel planted it from uh, some of the walnuts in the neighbor's yard, which I'm sure a squirrel planted from a big walnut that I know kind of down the way. Um, while I'm showing you here, another really distinctive feature, ah, there we go, I don't have to wait. Um, walnut species have a chambered pith. So the inside of the, the, the pith, which is the interior of these stems, uh, once the stem gets about one year old or older, uh, well, this chambered pith will start to show up. So that's a very distinctive trait. Um, also, another distinctive trait of black walnut, um, the, because it fruits so heavily, uh, the flowers in the spring uh, are just covering the tree. Um, my wife likes to say it looks like a, a Mardi Gras tree, you know, where all the beads are thrown up in the tree because there's so many dangling flowers. They're, they're long, dangling catkins. Uh, they're kind of a greenish, greenish color, greenish brown in color, very distinctive. So I've mentioned a couple times uh, the, the wildlife eating it, but it's not just squirrels and it's not just people eating black walnut. Um, it is also a uh, very important uh, mass species for deer, turkey, bear, anything that is consuming that hard mast. Um, so an important part of our floodplain forest, it is one of the top species of our floodplain forest here in eastern North America. So really important at stabilizing stream banks, uh, really important at um, having that native vegetation that's keeping our streams cool, um, feeding all the macroinvertebrates, all the life inside of our streams that are going to help keep our, clean, our streams nice and clean and feed our larger organisms in streams that we like to see like, like trout. So there you have it, black walnut, beautiful tree, beautiful wood, excellent uses, uh, and good thing it's so common because it's a really wonderful tree.